here. So there are going to be people that get saved. But another 1.5 billion, we're just rounding things off, die in this time because they've been given, they've been given permission by the pale horse to kill by war, by famine, by sickness, by wild beasts. Some will argue the beast is the, is the system of the Antichrist. Some will argue beasts are like lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. Yep and yep. Okay, we'll go with that. But they've been given permission to kill that many people. And because the people being saved, the next seal, the fifth seal, is the martyrs that have been killed, or those who have been martyred and killed during this time are asking for vengeance. God, when are you going to avenge what's happened to us? That's the fifth seal. The sixth seal is the catastrophe on the earth as the earth is shaken. The Bible says that, that the, the, the sun will be darkened. The moon will be like blood. Stars will fall from the sky. Is that a result of earthquake and, and then or volcanic eruptions throwing rocks? Because it talks about the figs, uh, you know, being thrown to the earth and, and hitting the people and, and people hiding in caves and wishing that God would have the mountains fall on them. Everybody, young, old, rich, and poor, all of them hiding. And all of them saying, oh my gosh, this is God, but yet not repenting and not turning. And then the seventh seal. And hush falls over heaven and it's silent for 30 minutes and then we begin to see the woes and the trumpets of God begin to be revealed it's a book worth studying it's a God worth being revealed to you I can't preach on it this morning God won't let me But the Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast, one and two. One and two? Yeah, one and two. First one dies. He's resurrected. Ooh, just like Jesus happened to be. Try to talk about a, a guy trying to look and act like Jesus, except completely negative, completely the opposite. The mark of the beast, 666. You remember the movie? How many remember the movie? They shaved the little kid's head, and they were 666 up on his forehead, up on the top of his head. Not like that. 666 is three sixes. Six is man's number. Three is complete. The mark of the beast is just man. It is not God whatsoever. It's completely man. It's completely man-driven. But like I said, look what the world is trying to do to get us ready for this. Have you ever watched TV lately? Watch something that doesn't have homosexuality in it. Can you? Can you find it? It's all over. And it's being stuffed down the world's throat. LGBTQ, LMNOP, XYZ community. I don't even know the letters. God loves every one of them. God doesn't love what it represents. Because it's man deciding, I'll do what's right in my own sight. That's the Antichrist. What was the sin of Adam and Eve? They ate from the tree of the knowledge of good or evil. What did that mean? They said, we can decide for ourselves what's good and what's evil. And God says, no, you can't. That's my job. That makes me God. So here we are looking at humans saying that I can live this way. I could be changed. If I was born a man, God who formed me, knew me before I was even formed in the womb is crazy. I was not meant to be a man. I was meant to be a woman. Therefore, I'm going to change. That's nonsense. Daniel 11, verse 37. I'll read this scripture to you. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers. We're talking about the Antichrist. He's a Jew, realize. He has to be a Jew. So he'll not regard the God of his fathers. Who's that? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who are the God of his fathers? The God of heaven. And he will not regard them. The next thing. He will not desire you'll have no desire of women. You'll be gay. That's why it's pushed so hard. So what? There's another gay guy. 
we're, we are totally insensitized to it. We don't care. They're all over. We watch TV. Why? Because it has to be pushed so that we say, okay, we'll go for that. The church can't go for that. We have to stand up against that demonic spirit. That's our job. That's, that's our commission. That's our call. And then it goes on to say, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself. The Antichrist, he's got a complex, and it's him. So anyway, why did I share that? Because uh, I could, and I wanted to, and I wanted to make this point strong. God has called us to occupy until he comes. We can't just sit around waiting for, remember 88 reasons why Jesus is coming back in 88? How many are old enough? How many know people who sat on their roof waiting for the rapture to happen? I actually know somebody who did that. And then the book came out, 89 reasons why he's coming back in 89, uh, because they missed one, and therefore he couldn't come back in 88. And that's true. That happened. And so what happens is we get focused on, oh, God, when are you going to come? God, when are you going to come? And God says, don't worry about that. That's in my hands. You occupy until I come. But here's how you're going to occupy, by faith. You're going to operate in faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Okay? Substance. Faith is substantive. If you have something of substance, what do you have? You can touch it. You can see it, right? It's, it's, it's substance. And the word substance is a compound word in the Greek, and the first part of it is hupo. It means under. It means foundation. It means cornerstone. It means genitive. It means it's constantly reproducing. So the faith is constantly reproducing. And the second half of that substance words is to stand in covenant. And the word is histe me. And it means to stand in covenant. So substance is a continual birthing of our covenant with God. The covenant foundation. It's the cornerstone. Faith is the cornerstone of the covenant. Of things hoped for. From the Greek, it's alpese, an anticipation with confidence and pleasure. Faith is the cornerstone of our covenant that we are anticipating with confidence and pleasure. Faith puts us in a position that we go... Cool, I cannot be moved. I'm standing on a rock, and I love it. That's what faith does. That's what faith is for. Galatians 5. Turn with me there if you haven't. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. I want to read this scripture, verse 1 through 6. Listen, if we look at the news, if we look at the world around us, we'll crumble if we're not walking in faith. If we're, look, if, we're trying to, if we're trying to operate just by what's happening around us, we will lose hope, we will lose confidence, we'll lose joy, and we will be feckless on the earth. But God says, oh, no, 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 that's not the church that I've raised up. That's not the church I've called you to be. Galatians 5, if you're there, verse 1 through 6, freedom is what we have. Christ has set us free. We are free to be like Jesus, according to 2 Corinthians, don't you turn there, 3.18, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, and we with unveiled faces are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory that comes from the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. The ministry that you've been called to is making coffee. It's ushering a it's standing at the door and greeting. Yes, all important things. The ministry you've been called to is being transformed into his likeness. The ministry that every one of us has been called to is to be like Jesus. Out of that, then, we can do everything that's at hand to do with power, with authority, and with positive kingdom results. If we try to do anything on our own or with our own ability, whatever you've done today because you can do it, because you know how to do it, and you didn't take faith to operate in it, will burn up when you try to present it before the Lord. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. We have to believe that he is and that he's a, and he's a, a, a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have to intentionally include God in all that we do. God, bless this. Use me today in whatever I'm doing. And the Holy Spirit comes alongside us and says, cool, let's get her done. And by the way, as we're on our way getting her done, uh, this person over here needs to be healed, and that person over there needs deliverance, and that person is ready to meet me and come to know me. Why don't you help me out? 
I want to get to know them. Lead them to Christ for me. And all of a sudden, you're finding yourself on your daily trek, whatever it is that you do, being a tool. (laughs) Some of you are a tool. Being a tool for the Lord. Why? Because you're operating in faith. Because you're operating in the presence of God. Because faith and because our, our, our quest to be like Christ demands that we come into the presence of the Lord. We, we can't just casually get it by sitting under an apple tree in, in, in the, out in the great outdoors that God has made and go, oh, isn't it beautiful? It is beautiful. But an apple tree under a nice sunny sky will not transform you unless you're engaging in Jesus through prayer, through the word, meditating, through worship. He inhabits your praise. He's right there. You start praising, he inhabits your praise. And he begins to change. Galatians, keep going. Uh, Christ has set us free. Stand then as free people and do not allow yourself to become slaves again. Okay, that means this. If you've been set free by Christ, there is an opportunity to be enslaved or chained up again in whatever it is that chains you up. And Paul says this. Don't do it. Don't let it happen. Well, do I have that power? Yes. Say no. Say no to those things. Say yes to the things of God. You have a choice. Which one? They're marked clearly. Death, death, death. Life, life, life. Choose life. God said it that way. I put before you life and death. Let me give you the answer. Choose life. And they're flashing. Death, death, life, life. God didn't hide them. What's behind the door number one? What's behind door number two if you're the old game show people? He doesn't hide them. They're obvious. Choose life. If it's God, it's life. If it's not, it's death. Is that simple? Could it be that simple? It is. God didn't make it hard. How'd you get saved? Well, it was a regular six weeks course. It was like boot camp. And by the time the six week was up, I was saved. No, you asked Jesus into your heart to forgive you of your sin. It was a sentence or two. And bam, God did the work by the Holy Ghost. God made it simple. He knew us. Got to keep it simple. Oh, we, listen. That's what Paul says. Verse 2. Listen. I, Paul tell you that if you allow yourself to be circumcised, it means that Christ is of no use to all of you. Once more, I warn you, any man who allows himself to be circumcised, that he is obligated to obey the whole law. Those of you who try to put on to be put right with God by obeying the law have cut yourself off from Christ. You are outside God's grace. Let me tell you what that means. If you are trying to get to heaven by good works, you're going to fail. If you're trying to get close to Christ by ba- based on what you are doing, I'll live good enough, you're going to fail. How do I supposed to live then? By faith. We, just, we still do faith without works. Faith requires action and doing. But again, we're, we're not just going about doing what we know how to do. I've done that many times. How many of you drove to the church today and didn't even get out the map? Why? Because you know how. Right? How many of you drove to church this morning, though, engaging in Christ and saying, Lord God, direct me and guide me by your Holy Spirit as I go. Keep us safe, blah, 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 and all the stuff that you do. Engage the Lord in everything that you do. It becomes gold. Why? Because it's going to stand before God someday, and it won't be burned up. It will be refined. Because you've engaged your faith in what you do. Let's keep going. Verse 5. As for you, our hope is that God has put us right with him. And this, and this is what we wait for by the power of God's spirit working through our faith. For when we are in union with Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor lack of it makes any difference at all. What matters is faith that works through love. John 1 or 1 John 4, verse 8 says, God is love. What matters is faith that works through God. Trusting in him, working with him. So all this stuff that's leading us up to the end times, we don't look at that and go, ah! We look at that and go, yeah! Yeah, it's my moment. If you're Old Testament hero who operated outside being filled with the Holy Spirit. How many was Samson? How many it was Gideon? How many of you was Daniel in the lion's den? How about Esther? 
Let's throw Esther in there. What did she do? She was put on earth for a time such as this. God looked down through the, the lineage, which he's the Alpha and the Omega of, because time is in God. God is not in time. And he said, right there, I need Esther. So he plops her down there. She saves Israel. Mm. Look around you. Look at the people who were plopped down in central Michigan for such a time as this. You aren't here accidentally. You were looked on by God and said, when can I use Nick Duke? Bam. Here you are, bud. For this moment, for this time, to fulfill some things that God has for you to fulfill in him, to be used. So we're looking at the end times. We're looking at the situation we're in, and God says, I know the perfect group that's ready to operate in faith, not by sight, but by faith, walk with faith, and accomplish in the midst of what's happening in the world. And not be swayed in fear, not be swayed by, by I'm depressed. Oh, how, I, who am I? What can I do? You can communicate with heaven. What? Yeah. You can move heaven and earth. You can say to a mountain, be removed. Jesus said to the disciples, oh, you of little faith. And we think he was mad at them. I don't, I mean, Jesus rebuked the, and called the Pharisees hypocrites. But I can't see Jesus being hard on his disciples. He was teaching them. He was loving them. He said, look, guys, you have a little faith. Use it. Because it only takes that much to move a mountain. Size of a grain of a mustard seed. I don't even know how big or little that is. But it's tiny. You got a little faith? That's plenty. It's plenty to get the job done. Get at it. How much faith have you got? How does faith come? Well, it comes by hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So how much of the word are you putting into you? How much of the word are you hearing? When you read the Bible, do you read it to yourself? How many of you read the Bible to yourself? How many of you read it out loud? Start reading it out loud. Start hearing it. Let your ears get activated, not just your brain. I'm not saying you don't read silently. If there's, you don't walk around, you don't have to walk around. For God so loved the world. Is everybody listening? I mean, <laughs> walking through Times Square, downtown Breckenridge. And I'm, you don't have to do that. But my point is, in, read the word out loud. How many of you pray in the Holy Spirit? Pray in tongues. Got your prayer language. How many of you do it like Paul? Without ceasing. Oh. Paul says, I thank God I pray in tongues more than y'all. And there's one translation there that, that says that I thank God I pray in tongues more than all of you put together. That would be a lot. Or maybe it wasn't. Who knows? I don't know how, many they, how much they were doing. Pray in tongues. I got looked at crazy the other day. I was mowing my grass. I went all of August without mowing my lawn. <laughs> I never do that. All of August. I was busy. My neighbors even came over and said to Carrie, hey, if your lawnmower's broke, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll mow your lawn for you. <laughs> Whoops. Better get out there and do it. So I was mowing through the back, and she was out with her dogs, and I was just mowing up and down. Son, having a good old time praying in tongues, and she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Me and God just having a great old time. Pray in tongues. Pray, you can pray in tongues because your mind is unfruitful. You can do everything your mind needs to do, your brain has to do, and your spirit is just communion with God. And guess what you're doing according to Jude 20? You're building yourself up in your most holy faith as you pray in tongues. Who's the author and the finisher of your faith? Jesus. So here's a question for you. It's the question that the Lord wanted me to ask. How many of you, and I want a show of hands, believe that Jesus Christ is God. Raise your hand. How many of you have settled it? Jesus Christ is God. Chuck, that's a weird question. Well, yeah, maybe, but maybe not. Because God is easy to, to ascend to, so to speak. God bless you. Well, what have I really said? What God? I mean, even Psalm 135 says that, you know, men make all these idols. They can't talk. They can't speak, but they worship them, and they become like them. 
I mean, there's all sorts of gods out there. But when Jesus becomes God, it's a little more difficult to say, God bless you, Jesus bless you. When you equate Jesus as God, then all the things that Jesus represents are now tied to God. And all of a sudden, you are obligated to all the things that Christ has obligated us to. Spend time with the Father. I only say what I heard the Father say. Oh, that puts us in that category. We've got to be careful with what we talk about then. I only do what I saw the Father do. Ooh, that maybe narrows a lot of you down to doing very little. And some of you can keep doing a whole bunch because you're doing what the Father has done. But you need to ascend to the point in your, in your relationship and settle it. Christ is God. And if you do that, then all the things that Jesus laid out in the Scripture for us to do, you'll begin to take serious, and you'll begin to apply and you'll begin to walk in those things. And suddenly, as you do walk down the street, and the Holy Spirit says, that person has such and such, pray for them. And you'll say, excuse me, can I pray for you? I know you have blah, blah, blah. How did you know that? By the Spirit of God. If somebody says, hey, will you pray for me? Don't say, yeah, I sure will. Yeah, tonight my wife and I will pray for you grab them right there and do it. I can't tell you when I was working for Silers how many people would come in and say, Chuck, uh, would you pray for me? I said, I sure will. Let's pray right now and right over the meat counter. Took a few of them by surprise. And we saw, we saw all sorts of miracles happen right in Silers Market as people got healed. And then all of a sudden, people would come in and say, hey, Chuck, I know when you pray, God hears and does things. Will you pray with me? And suddenly, you'll have a reputation of what? Of making Jesus famous. Because we don't have the ability to heal by our own power. But thank God we have the Holy Spirit in us. And we are operating in faith. We're operating by faith. Last scripture. We're out of time. Wow. Which one, Lord? I can't. There's so many that I had. I spent too much time on Revelation. How about... How about this one? Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. You know, I've said this over and over to my, to my uh, teens that I teach in the groups, in the, in the team. God, his favorite, his favorite game is? Anybody in here? What? Hide and go seek. Absolutely. He loves hide and go seek. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. That was the thing. So the mystery which has been hidden from ages. God hid something. <laughs> Can't wait to show him. Can't wait to help him find this. Colossians 1.26. God is giddy. What? Isn't God an old man with a long beard and sits on the throne kind of grumpy? No, he's giddy. He's all excited. He's bubbly. He's, he's the most amazing daddy, grandpa, whatever you want to visualize him at ever. He loves to laugh. You've ever visualized God laughing? Has God ever told anybody a joke? Really? God tells me jokes. Remind me of Rick Brooks. Not very funny, but they're there. They're awesome. No. I've had God jokes before, but he says, The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints, for to them, God would make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations. God says, man, I've, keepin, I've kept this hidden until right now. And Paul, you get to deliver it. You get to unveil the mystery that I've hidden. Ready for this? Christ in you, the hope of glory. <gasps> what? Do you realize all those Old Testament saints did all these th amazing things? And God said, hey, I haven't, I didn't have them all do that. He said, I've saved some great things for you. I'm not going to let, let you be left in the dust. You are part of this. God gave us amazing things. Uh, uh, gave us the Holy Spirit. Gave us Jesus. He gave us power. He gave us redemption. 
And here he says, Paul says, the mystery is revealed. It's Christ in you. It's the Son of God dwelling in you, the forgiveness of God, the power of God, the riches of the kingdom, the wisdom that's God dwelling in you. And it's the hope of glory. What is that? It's the hope of the character of God, the presence of God, the covenant that God has established, the goodness, the compassion, and the mercy of God being spread through the world. Let the whole earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. That's the commission. That was Adam's commission at the beginning when God made a little garden and said, No Eve, know her and conceive. Have some babies so the garden has to grow because it's not big enough to contain the family that continues to grow until the whole earth is filled. Why? Because Satan had been cast down here and God put righteousness right in the middle of it and said, It's going to grow until all. All of the wickedness that is Satan is destroyed. It was a privilege given to the children of God to destroy the enemy completely. God hasn't changed that. So here we go. By the way, just a little tidbit. Did you know that Adam knew Eve and she conceived and bore Cain? And then she bore Abel. Anybody know that? Notice she didn't conceive between Cain and Abel. I wonder if they were twins. Hmm, just a thought. Somebody study that out. Write it on a paper and bring it back to me next week. We're Cain and Abel twins. Christ is in you. He's the substance and hope for our lives. He's the foundation of our faith. He has commissioned you. He's calling you to operate in faith during this time, for such a time as this, in faith. Not your own strength, not your own ability. You're going to use your body. You're going to use your brain. You're going to use your hands and your feet. But you're going to do it by faith. And you're going to accomplish great things because of it. So your neighbors now are marked. Close your eyes. See your neighbor. Now put, it, put a gun sight like on them. You can see them now right in the crosshairs. Not for destruction, but for salvation. I know some of you are thinking, oh, good, we'll get rid of that way. If my neighbor's here, Mike... Attack them with the, with the love of God, the character and the nature of God, the goodness of God. Think about your community, your neighborhood, your town that you live in, your family. As the holiday season comes in, are you going to be spending time with those who are not saved? I'm heading to Wisconsin to see an aunt that I haven't seen for a long time and some cousins that don't know Christ. I'm excited. It's time. It's time to start operating in faith. Start operating in doing. Start operating in the kingdom. Start op operating in the, in the values that God has placed in you because he's placed you here for this time. Don't worry about what's happening in the world. It's all set. It's all taken care of. You're praying. You're, you're, you're moving the hand of God. Uh, the, or the, you're moving the circumstances by the hand of God because of your faith. All right? All right. I've not long enough. So uh, if you're part of the prayer team, come on up. How many here, though, have never made Jesus the Lord of your life? You're here and you say, I don't know Jesus as my Lord. If I were to die today, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. Is there anybody here like that? Raise your hand and we want to pray for you. We're not going to embarrass you. Chuck, don't you have, shouldn't you have everybody close their eyes and bow their head? No, it's not necessary. Because this is a good thing. We all want to celebrate with you. How many have done that? Raise your hand. Jesus is your Lord. Really? Some of you haven't? Okay. So two-thirds of the hands were raised. One-third of you never raised a hand. So that means you're not saved, right? How many of the one-third who are still here want to get saved? Raise your hand. Okay, how many didn't raise their hand the first time around when I said you are saved? Okay, there's a few people. I thought. Because I looked at every one of you who didn't raise a hand. I was going to go get you. All right. Um, so I want to pray for you. Then I'm going to turn it over to Dakota. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll dismiss. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. God, for the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, that has filled us. Father, with the ability, Lord God, to do kingdom things now for this time. So, Father, we don't look at the things that are going on around us. Father, we recognize, Father, that greater is Christ in us than the devil that's in this world.
We recognize, Father, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Father, we realize that no matter what the enemy tries to do, God, you bring, like a flood, you raise up a standard against him, and he'll not prevail against us as believers. So, Father, we stand confident in you, in your word. Father, in the ability for us, Lord God, to be operators of your kingdom, in power, establishing and bringing glory. God, not just going about day to day, Father, que sera, sera, but going about the day intentional with things of the kingdom, Lord God, on our mind. Mm. And we can do it laughing. We can do it with a giggle. We can do it just full of joy because, Father, you are giddy. Ah, so we can be that way too. Kingdom is fun. God is fun. Jesus is amazing. Holy Spirit is absolutely fantastic. And God, we are part. And we thank you for that. Bless these people now, Lord God. Father, cause them to rise up in the name of Jesus. Father, with boldness and confidence to believe your word and to operate it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Are you guys excited? Man, I'm fired up. I know I don't sound it, but I really am. <laughs> I really am. No, for real. You know, uh, do you know that God has counted you faithful already? Well, I haven't really done anything. He called you faithful. In, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, he's, Paul says that, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ who has enabled me because he has counted me faithful. And then he goes through all these things. Paul's, you know, I was, all these things, you know, he killed Christians and he did all these things, you know, and he's talking about all these things that he used to do. He's like, but God still called me faithful. See, God sees you already fulfilling the call that he has on your life. Amen? Amen? Listen, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are us. So it's time to go. It's time to do things. I, the word that I got today uh, was uh, somebody's having issues in their, in their bowels. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm not going to put a spin on it. Come forward if you're having any kind of issue with that. Um, and then Jake had a word. Yep. So the beginning service, I got a first part of what I was supposed to say. Um, it was a respiratory issue with the lungs. Um, but then, you know, started listening even more and got out of my own way and actually listened to the Holy Spirit, which is pretty helpful. And uh, then he proceeded to say that it isn't just the fact of the healing. It's the fact of the fear when it comes to the respiratory issue in, in our day of age. And I don't want to point anybody out, but God has already told me who it is. But don't push away the body of Christ. Surround yourself with other lions. Because what is a lion afraid of? Um, just if you're experiencing pain in your lower back. Amen. And then the last one was, if you're in this place and you have not received the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that was talked about today. It is amazing. It is a tool that God has given us to grow our faith. You need it. You do. It's amazing. It's amazing. So be blessed. Come forward if you need healing in any other way. Uh, in your body at all, come forward. We want to pray with you. Oh, don't forget your kids. <laughs> Amen. Yay.